What can you tell us about availability? Any changes? Um, from the weekend, are there any changes? It's Scotty, I guess. Scotty Arfield is back in contention. He's trained with us. Um, so he's fine. Enzo Capetti obviously came back last week. He's fine. Um, so, as I've said to the medical department at the moment, they've opened the door of the greenhouse or glass house as it is in, in the US. Uh, so we've got a lot more people available now. I know Ben was doing a little bit more this morning. Is is he progressing well? He's progressing really well. Him and Brandon um, are coming along nicely. Um, ben got to do some of the passing work today with with the squad, and uh, in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, we can integrate him into into some training. In terms of from last week, you had said that there was a lot of disappointment off of the the draw. How have kind of they attacked this week? Has there been almost kind of a residual like, hey, you know, we took these two games against the supporters winners and the MLS Cup winners and, and maybe having dealt a little bit more confidence? Yeah, I think first and foremost, they were disappointed as a group uh, because they felt they deserved the three points and probably didn't take enough chances to, to, get, to, to get the three points. Um, but, you know, I think they took the words that I said to them after the game on board and came in on Monday refreshed um, and pleased with their performance. And, you know, that they can be because I thought we were excellent on Saturday. How much do you think you'll be able to use Lille on Saturday? Um, probably too early for him to, to start, um, but he got a good 35 minutes under his belt. He also played on, we had a, a game on Monday, and he played 45 minutes in that, so he's getting he's getting back to full fitness, which is which is good news for us. And from Enzo and Patrick, is that going to turn into almost a matchup dependent thing, or do you feel like you want to see one of those two guys separate from each other? No, I want them both to be pushing each other. Um, I think they can both give a little bit different in in the ways they play. Um, you know, and I I want competition there. Uh, you know. Sometimes I believe that we could probably play with, with both of them, but you know, uh, at the moment we've gone with one or the other, um, and you know, let's see, let's hope it's a, a blossoming battle between the two of them, and they start banging some goals in. Was it a friendly about a play then? Like a little yeah, we had a, we had a friendly. Um, we had a friendly game here, and we played uh, full full ninety minutes. With with other teammates, or how would you? No, we, we invited a, a team in. Um, am I right to give you a team? Yeah. Yeah, we we invited uh, NCFC in, okay. um, and we had a game against them. Okay. Well, um, having been here Tuesday night and kind of seeing Saturday for him, how do you think he's he's done? You know, with getting used to the team, his introduction here. I think he's done well, and I think because of of the dressing room that we've got and the the players that we've got, I think it's a lot easier to to come in and mix straight away. Um, they're really good people, uh, the players that we've got here, and I think they they help the integration procedure really quickly. And uh, you know, he looks he looks like he's been here more than you know just a few days already. Um, and Veronica, getting him back. Is there any scenario where you have him and two other eights in there, or I don't know, if like he's, is he making you think about things? Yeah, he certainly is, and that, that's the beauty of it, and that's what I want. I want to be thinking about things. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, for the first three, four games, the team picked itself, so to speak, and, you know, the bench picked itself, and now we can actually change things a little bit, and, you know, uh, I'll have to upset a few people, but that's the, the beauty of my job. Thanks. Steve, and then we'll come back. Uh, looking towards New England and stuff, they had a rough CONCACAF match this week. Uh, and to be honest, they haven't been a team in form this season at all yet. Are they, I mean, are they a team ripe for the picking or are they a wounded animal that you have to be wary of? Um, I'm not sure which one, um, but we have to be wary uh, because I watched them in the build up to our Toronto game. I think they played Toronto the second game. and. They were by far the better team on the day, uh, but lost one nil to um, a strike. I think it was something like 24 shots to four on the on the on the day. Um, so we have to be very very careful that we don't take anything for granted, and we won't. Um, you know, again, respect them, but but no fear, and uh, we'll go there and try and you know implement our game game style onto them. 
And on the other side, Charlotte is a team that's finding its confidence going through. Even in defeat, there have been some very strong performances. At what point do, is there a worry of uh, confidence becoming overconfidence? I don't think there will be with this group. Um, number one, I won't let it, um, you know, because I think I've said before, I still think we're a six out of ten. There's still a lot of growth in us, and um, you know, we're not reaching the standards that I believe we can reach. So there won't be overconfidence, and the players know that as well. Um, you know, we we talk, we review games, we. Um, we preview the next game as well and we talk about what we can do better, what we must improve on. So, you know, there'll be certainly no complacency from us. And does that, does that start in training where, with the competitiveness of just getting into the squad? Yeah, I believe it does. I, I think nobody's, you know, in that team at the moment thinking I've nailed down my place. You know, with the, with the people that are coming back and we've mentioned already, we've just signed Leal. You know, you've got Bronico coming back. You've got Scott Arfield, who started, you know, uh, the, the game before he got injured. Um, so we've got a lot of players now who are pushing for places, which is, which just makes a really competitive environment. Wow, thank you. Cheers. Okay. Um, we've seen, I guess, less minutes from Yuri Tavares. I mean, he played last match, and he came on. Um, just, I guess, your assessment on him recently, and maybe why he's been kind of dropped off. Yeah, I mean, Yuri, as we all know, had a storming start to the season, you know, uh, uh, created an assist in the goal against New York City with a, a fine header and a good performance and then scored the goal at Vancouver. I probably think he's just dropped off a little bit, which is probably expected. I, I think young lads, when they move up, you know, from legacy to, to the first team as it is here in the MLS, you know, it can be a little bit up and down at times in terms of form. and. My job is to recognise when I feel that that drop is going to come and maybe take them out and, and work them to make sure they're, they're, they're getting you know, some continu continual progress in their, their performances. So I just thought it was the right time to take him out. Um, and you know, he's, he's caught in between a little bit because he can play left, but he can also play as a 10 as well. And you know, the way I've wanted to play at the moment is him to be a little bit wider and he's been drifting inside a little bit too much at times. And, but that's you know, part of his makeup and you know, uh, we've been working with him over the last two weeks of when to come inside and when not to. And then, yeah. um, you know, three matches that you've played away so far, you still haven't gotten a win. Is there anything that you've learned from those matches that maybe you want to implement going into New England this weekend? Well, the big thing for me is the, the change of mentality. Um, and that, that's one bit, been one of the biggest surprises for me that I think everybody believes that it's so hard to get points on the road. I'm not necessarily in that in that seat because uh, you know I've, I've travelled now to Vancouver, to Toronto and Nashville and I don't think any of them journeys have resulted in us not getting the result on the day. Um, I think some of the some of the decisions that we've made on the day of, 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 of what are the reasons why we haven't got the win and sometimes it's been things that are beyond our control. Um, take out of that what you will. And then finally, um, we've seen Brett in that 10 role. We've seen uh, at Kovic as well. Is that a position that kind of still concerns you? It doesn't concern me uh, because I've got players that can play there. Um, you know, I'd like to see a lot more chances come from that position. Uh, I think without the ball, we've been really good in that position. With the ball, I think we could do a little bit better. But then pl the players who we have there can certainly do that. And it's hard. Players want to get a little bit of rhythm. And I think because of the injuries we had earlier, it's been tougher for them to get a little bit of rhythm. Uh, but I'm starting to see that now. Yes. You've called the nature of the goals you've conceded a lot of times preventable. Um, you also have talked about how it's okay to take to get chances. You just got to have guys take them. How worried are you that it's maybe created a bit of a, a thin margin for error for your defense? Um, I think we we've defended well as a team. I don't think it's just a, the defense. So. Um, Again, against uh, you know Cincinnati last week, apart from the goal, I think very rarely did the opposition get through to see 
the whites of my goalkeeper's eyes, which is what I want them to, to not be doing. Um, he's, he's having to save shots from 25, 30 yards and on the angles, which I expect my goalkeeper to do. So, um, you know, defensively, we've been really good with them. Listen, we know and we've been working on, you know, how to convert them, how to convert the chances we're getting, but to make sure that we keep getting them chances, that's the biggest thing. Um, our job is to coach the players, as I said last week. Nice revolutionary war reference too, with the whites of their eyes. Uh, <laughs> there. Um, go into it, or in the road, and things. Because sometimes it can be the distance and just the travel itself. But when you were on, um, and you've said this before, but you when you were on with Sirius XM uh, earlier in the week, you were very boastful of how strong the crowds are in Charlotte and what that means here. Is that? been a significant difference too is that the road games may not have been as difficult because the crowds were not a factor possibly um, I mean one of the biggest differences I suppose for me coming to the MLS is the fact that you know you go away and I mean we scored at Vancouver and I didn't hear nothing it was just silence you know I, that's different for me um, you know a little bit different in Nashville where we had a, a good thousand fans there I and mean, you, could, you could hear them um, so yeah that is a difference um, but as long as we keep the opposition fans quiet I'm happy yeah and that's with the you know with the supporters maybe not being there in Vancouver but in Nashville and stuff but do you find it I mean psychologically for the players that that is you know, I, yeah, I mean, I, I say to the players before we go out there, I said, you know, there's no better feeling when it's just the 30 people or 40 people who have travelled, you know, along with the squad, the staff and the, the the content team. It feels so much better when you go and get a win, just you 40 against 20,000 who, who were all against you. So I, I, I find that a real good uh, incentive for everybody. Go. Speaking of the, of the whites of Kalina's eyes, yeah, he actually got a little bit of action last week. Were you happy with what you saw from him and, and his shot stopping? Yeah, no, really happy. And like I say, the the caliber of the goalkeeper we have, I don't expect him to get beat from 25, 30 yards. Um, and he's not, he's not looked like getting beat from that distance so far as well, which is really pleasing for us. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot he could do about the the goal uh, last week and you know yeah I'm really pleased with what he's doing so far. Uh, all right. And then you mentioned that maybe uh, Leal Abad is still not ready for those 90 minutes or to the start. What are, what what do you see in uh, the differences between him coming in, I guess a guy like Diani who came in and was ready to go? Um, the different types of players. Um, Leal's more of a fast twitch player. Uh, you know, he's. You, I think you saw from the 30 minutes that he played, he's a sprinter. Um, you know, he gets the ball and runs direct. You know, uh, I think DD's more of a, a galloper. You know, the way he runs. Um, you know, so there is a little bit difference. And I think, unfortunately for. For Liel as well, he's come off the back of an international break where he only played 20 minutes for the national team as well. Um, but I haven't not decided not to start him. I'm just not sure whether he's ready. But I'll have a I'll have a look, have a chat with him and a look tomorrow. Okay, everyone good in the room? Okay, um, let's go to Zoom real quickly. Uh, we got Sam Spencer first and Steve Monday second. Let me know if you can hear him, Steve. Hi, hey, good afternoon, Coach. Cheers. How are you? Okay. Yeah, good play. Um, so. Ah, the press. Uh, Caleb Porter, manager for the New England Revolution, um, just said that we're going to get a win Saturday. I promise that. I uh, wanted to know if you had any response. Well, he should make promises he, he might not be able to keep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, not a great statement to make if you if that's down to your team and not something that you can actually keep. <laughs> and then, um, you know, next, obviously we have the, the press conference introducing Leal um, officially to the media on, uh, on Tuesday. Um, clearly, uh, based on the questions in the room and a lot of the commentary, there's still um, a lot of questions about, um, you know, the transition and his reasons for leaving. Um, I just want to know if you know, you've had the opportunity to, to talk to him about that 
And if you could share any of how Charlotte FC as a club is uh, is supporting his, uh, uh, you know, his move to Charlotte. And we're very supportive and we're pleased to, to have Leo here. Um, he's been welcomed with open arms by all of our fan base, all of our staff, all of our supporters. Um, you know, and we're great to have. We're grateful to have him here. Um, you know, I don't think there's any more I need to say to him, to be honest. And other than that, we're pleased to have him. And then finally, save the toughest question for last: Taylor Swift or Beyonce? <laughs> you becoming Solarte now? Yeah, dear me. I think I'd have to go back to Madonna. That was more my my day. <laughs> Classic. Okay. All right, thanks, Sam. Uh, Steve. <laughs> hey, Coach, how are you today, sir? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, obviously, the weather is much colder today here than it has been over the past couple of days. We had 80 degrees a few days ago, but now we're in the 50s with some, some winds out there making it nice and cold. Uh, when you get to New England uh, Saturday, it's going to be even colder there. Temperatures in the 40s with a 40% chance of rain and some breezy conditions out on the pitch. How does that help you to get the team prepared, obviously, uh, with the temperatures transitioning here? to get cooler as you get up, up, up to the northeast? Well, it'll be a lot like going to Newcastle for me, so looking forward to it. And, um, you know, we, we've got some European players who are, who are used to these conditions as well, uh, none more than uh, Yere Urinen. Um, so we'll, we'll all be used to these conditions, and, uh, you know, if they want to warm up, run a little bit more. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay, final one, uh, Queen's Pitch. Um, is that me, Will? Oh, sorry. Queen, I'm just seeing the queue from back here over here. Queen City Soccer Show. Luke Beetle, go ahead. Okay. Hey, uh, Gap, this is Luke. I uh, just wanted to, to check in with you. Uh, as far as the recent run of form, uh, you guys played arguably the roughest stretch of the year on paper, uh, and we could come out with a, a number of pull points here. Do you think that this is a squad that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top of the East? Uh, can you see Charlotte FC finishing uh, in, in the top and getting a home playoff game? I mean, I'm not going to look too far ahead at all because, you know, it's fairly new to me. But, you know, the two top teams we've just played over the last two weeks and we've fared reasonably well against them, played well against them. I think there's a belief in this group that we can grow and get better and I still think there's a lot more to come um, but we've got to find consistency in our game if we do that then there's no reason why we can't